Hello everyone, Beata here and welcome back to Season 2, Episode 2. Today we're going to be looking at natural fibers. In Season 1, we had a look at cotton, linen, hemp, bamboo, wool and silk. And I'll have all of these videos linked down below for your viewing pleasure. Natural fibers, that is the way clothes were made in the earliest of days. And what you've seen in season one and that you'll probably see in season two as well, is a lot of the synthetic fibers that we'll be covering is produced to imitate, feel and look and present in a way that natural fibers actually already do. Natural fibers still remaining, I would say, the king and queen of the materials and the world of fabrics. But synthetic fibers are very cheap to manufacture in comparison to natural fibers. And therefore, synthetic fibers imitate the uh, qualities of natural fibers. These are the fibers that are naturally produced by Mother Earth. The most common plants being cotton, linen, hemp, bamboo, and the animal ones, leather, most likely from cow hides, silk from silk worm cocoons, cashmere from the cashmere goat, alpaca from alpacas, wool from sheep, and mohair from the angora goat. Flax fibers from the linen plant is thus far the oldest fabric that we've seen in human history. A team of archaeologists and paleobiologists has discovered flax fibers that are more than 34,000 years old, making them the oldest fibers known to have used by humans. I have a link from Harvard University down below if you'd like to read more. I would like to talk about biodegradability when talking about natural fibers. Biodegradability refers to the ability of materials to break down and return to nature. In order for a product or a material to be biodegradable, it must completely break down and decompose into natural elements within a short period after disposal, typically a year. Therefore, it turns into harmless, non-toxic elements. That is what biodegradable means. Therefore, not all natural fibers are biodegradable. But how does that make sense? Because of modern farming, loads of toxic chemicals and fertilizers are used in the production of natural fibers that makes these fibers non-biodegradable. Furthermore, the dyes that are being used is most likely toxic. Note that biodegradability is not the same as decomposing. Many things will decompose over a number of years or months or days. The sooner the better, but if it leaves toxic elements in the soil, it is not biodegradable. Therefore, when buying natural fibers, derived from plants, go organic as far as possible. Looking at natural fibers that are derived from animals, we also are sitting with another issue, which is not necessarily the organic conversation of biodegradability, but rather the cruelty factor. Due to many workers on farms being paid on a productivity rate, such as the more sheep you shave in an hour, the more you get paid, therefore encourages workers to work carelessly when working with these animals. Laws and standards are in place some of the time to prevent this from happening. But all, as we all know, it doesn't always happen that way. Therefore, when you buy animal hairs, make sure that you buy cruelty free. The important thing to know is that when you are buying organic and cruelty free, it will cost more than the other options. Therefore, I encourage you to buy less and wear your things that you have with more care, with more love and with more intention. 
That way you won't find the need to buy millions of things to make you happy, but rather a few things that you really care about and that you know you've spent your money on a worthwhile item. And that way you can take care of it very well and wear it for a long period of time. Let's talk about fabrics being eco-friendly. Natural fibers that we've now had a look at have a smaller environmental impact in comparison to synthetic fibers. The reason for that is that in the production process of natural fibers, not as many chemicals are used in comparison to synthetic fibers. Some natural fibers are less eco-friendly than others due to the amount of water that is being used and the amount of care such as pesticides that are also used on the plants in general. Hemp is a great example of a fiber that requires very little water and little to no pesticides at all. I hope that this video gave you a bit of a bird's eye view on the category of natural fibers. If you think I've missed anything, please leave me a note down below or if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you for watching today and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye everyone.